Hello, my name is Karen Hui, Senior Partner Marketing Manager at HashCorp, and I'll be helping to facilitate today's webinar titled Getting Started with Ambassador and Console on Kubernetes Using Kubernetes Initializer. During the session, we will explore how you can quickly get started with both Ambassador and Console on Kubernetes by lever leveraging the new Kubernetes Initializer built by Ambassador. Please feel free to type your questions during the webinar using the Q&A feature. This webinar will be recorded and the recording will be available after post-processing, which usually takes a few days. Now I have the pleasure to introduce our speakers, David Yu, Product Manager, Console and Kubernetes HashiCorp, and Daniel Bryant, Product Architect, DataWire, Ambassador. We will finish with a demo and a Q&A session. And now here's Daniel who will start the presentation. Thank you, Daniel. Thanks for the intro there, Karen. Great stuff. So welcome, everyone. Appreciate you coming along. Whatever time zone you're in, I'm in the UK and David's over on the West Coast there. So we've got you covered. Really appreciate it. So we'll start by doing a kind of high-level TLDR, just to prime you. Oh, Daniel, you're on mute. Oh. Can, can you hear me now, Karen? Can you hear me? Can you hear me okay? I can hear you. Daniel, I think I think maybe oh. uh, Karen might have dropped off. <laughs> no worries. I'll continue on. Sorry, everyone. Yeah. No classic. Like uh, this, this is a Zoom but we're, way we're all working at the moment, right? <laughs> Can you hear me? You're on mute. Um, so yeah, just to set the scene, cloud native communication requires intentional design. So I you know was a Java developer back sort of 10, 15 years ago. When I moved into the cloud, learning about VPCs and the assembly of all the software-defined networking, I realized that like, my old mental models couldn't be lifted and shifted into the new world. And with Kubernetes, it's different again. So definitely think about how you design your ingress and your service-to-service -service comms. Today, David and I will be talking about bootstrapping your skills in a Kubernetes playground. This is really, really important. When you're bringing in ingress, bringing in a service mesh, you do want to experiment in a safe environment where you can mess up the cluster, blow it away, and start again. And the Kate's initializer, there's a, a free project, you log in, easily generate your YAML to get an application ready. Kubernetes cluster is a great way to do an experiment with your Kubernetes playground. We're going to be talking about Ambassador, which manages ingress traffic, traffic coming into your cluster, going to backend services. And of course, we're going to be talking about console as well, acting as a service mesh, managing service to service traffic. One of our meta messages at the end is as you adopt these technologies, as you move to Kubernetes, as you embrace ingress and service mesh, you need to evolve through a proof of concept to production. So playground proof of concept production. And we'll give you some tips on how to do that today. So very quickly, this is me uh, at Daniel Bryant UK on most of the interwebs. I do DevRel, Product Architect at, at Ambassador Labs, Labs now. And joining me today is David as well. Hey everyone, David Yu. I'm a product manager at HashiCorp. I focus on console for Kubernetes and I'm excited to show off uh, Kubernetes Initializer with the Ambassador Labs integration. Super, thanks, David. So, as I mentioned up front, cloud native comms can be complex. The good news when you're adopting Kubernetes is it provides good abstractions, things we can all agree on, things we can focus around to work on. There's things like the container native interface, the CNI plugins. Now, typically, this is provided by your cloud, or you may be using something like Calico or Cilium. We're not going to talk too much about this today, but it's still a nice abstraction layer over the virtualized hardware, over the software defined networking, quite at the low level. Ingress is where Ambassador plays. It's getting traffic into your cluster. We call this north-south traffic. Traffic coming in from users, meeting the edge of your data center, going through to your backend services. Kubernetes also introduces the concept of a service. And this is all about service-to-service -service communications. East-West traffic, very much where the service mesh plays. This is about service A talking to service B. A key message we'd like you to take away is you must integrate these abstractions into your platform dev ecosystem. Now, it's not just the case of adopting technologies and you know thinking that's going to be the, the end of it. But if you're more from an operational standpoint or coming more from an operational standpoint, enabling developers to use these tools in a self-service manner in particular, being able to define mappings to map endpoints to backend services, being able to map services to services within console. These are really important things. And now rather than the ops team or the platform team doing it, 
developers need to do this as well. So as you're bringing in this new cloud native way of working, think about the actual workflow and how it's going to impact it. If we just run through a typical you know, end to end kind of communication stack when you're, say, you've got some Kubernetes in the mix, maybe you've got some VMs, some heritage uh, hardware in the mix, some heritage applications, typically users, external, making a request into an API gateway. Typically, one point can be a couple of different points if you've got public and private kind of ingress set up. Once you know you've made that request into the API gateway, into your ingress, the ingress is then responsible for looking up where this endpoint maps to. So slash, you know, payment maps to the payment service as a very simple example. Now you can, of course, use Kubernetes, the Kubernetes services to do this lookup, map directly to this service I'm defining in the mapping to Kubernetes service with the same name, but you can get even more power, power when you adopt something like console, particularly running in its service mesh configuration. I'm sure many of you have used console for key value stores, and Ambassador can actually use console as a key value store to look up you know, a, a name to where the actual service has been deployed. And as long as it's network addressable, you, know, you can be running, say, a service on a VM, and console can say to Ambassador, this endpoint maps to this service running on this VM outside of Kubernetes. You've got that power out of the box. But when you use console in the service mesh mode, you get even more benefits, such as enhanced observability and MTLS between services, that enhanced um, mutual uh, TLS between services for identity of services and encryption of traffic. And this allows you, therefore, then you know, to route from an endpoint, from like Kubernetes into VMs, uh, typically via a sidecar. We'll show you today, like using Envoy is, is a very popular pattern to be in console uh, for the sidecar. And that sidecar then takes on the responsibility of service identity, uh, it takes on the responsibility of observability, because the service, every service only communicates to the outside world through its sidecar, and the outside world only communicates through to that service through the sidecar as well. So you can make other requests down, Sidecar intercepts it, this service looks up, uh, or sorry, makes a request to another service, console in the background is saying this is where this service is located. Very nice, nice abstractions for me as a developer. I just type my service names, you know, uh, user service, payment service, console's handling all the complexity of service discovery in the background, which is awesome. One of our key pitches today is start with a playground. Now, I wrote this article about six months ago now, actually, for the new stack, where I argued that if you're moving to a new technology like Kubernetes, you really need to take some time to experiment, both as an operator and also as a developer. Uh, you know, building the platform is one thing, actually running it is another. And you know, day-to-day -day operations where you're updating services and deploying new things, really, really important to have a playground where you can experiment safely without fear you're going to blow stuff up in production. And the Kubernetes initializer, the Kate's initializer, gives you just that. It's a free tool. We can give you the link in a minute, and David's going to give you a run through the demo as well. But in a nutshell, it's a point-and-click web app, like the wizards of old. You specify your, where your Kubernetes cluster is, Docker Desktop, Minikube, Amazon, GKE. David's going to use Azure today, AKS. Wherever you are running, you specify uh, this is the uh, target Kubernetes cluster. You specify your additional config. Here is the um, console config, for example. It's as simple as, do you want to enable console? You can also enable things like monitoring. We've got Argo for continuous delivery, Knative. It's basically a checkbox system. Once you've checked what you want, you click on the review and install button, and all your YAML is generated for you. Now, you can either download this YAML in a zip file and apply it, you know, look through it, apply it into your cluster, or you can simply copy and paste. It's nice kubectl commands that give you a link directly to your customized version. All the options you've selected will be integrated together. And so, you know, console can leverage Prometheus if you've checked those options. Ambassador can um, inject uh, correlation IDs for Jaeger for distributed tracing if you select those options. All you need to do is copy paste these kubectl commands, run it against your cluster, give it a couple of minutes, and up pops an application ready uh, Kubernetes cluster. Uh, oh, sorry, an application ready um, config on your Kubernetes cluster. Console config, same kind of thing, setting up a mapping, a few other things. If you are going to um, experiment with Ambassador and Console, and we hope you do, do make sure to run through all the instructions on the Kate's Initializer page, because there's a bit of extra config to link everything up. And that's where you get the real benefit of this playground. When you do link everything up, it's more of a full application ready type experience. 
So just a um, quick overview of the, of the technologies we'll be doing today. Both are built on open source components. The Ambassador Edge stack is Kubernetes native, Ingress, Envoy powered. Many of us know and love Envoy. It's fantastic proxy technology. CNCF came out of Lyft, Google, IBM, a bunch of other folks doing lots of very interesting work with Envoy now, and of course, HashiCorp. It's designed for self-service. The Edge stack is very much about giving uh, developers custom resources, mappings. As now, as my role as a developer, I'm not only coding my app, I'm coding the mapping, this endpoint to this service. I push it down a pipeline. I know many of us are using things like GitOps. I've mentioned Argo, but there's Flux, there's you know, CodeFresh, there's a bunch of other interesting products out there. But storing your config in version control, single source of truth, and then reconciling that single source of truth with a cluster. And folks often use operators to you know, deploy what's in their version control into their Kubernetes cluster. And both Ambassador and Console play very nicely with that model of deployment. We, we help with easy config of TLS, so TLS at the edge of your system, so browsers, you know, mobile devices connecting into the edge of your system. We have, you know, it's literally just like two clicks using the Kate's initializer. You can get a domain name, an edgestack.me domain name that's yours to play around with. You can get a um, Let's Encrypt certificate, all configured automatically via the Acme protocol. Super easy to get a um, end, you know, end-to-end -end TLS going on right from terminating at the edge with Ambassador, and Console can take that encryption even further, which David will run you through in a minute as well. And of course, Ambassador as an ingress, as an API gateway, has all the regular stuff you'd, you know, you'd expect, user authentication, plugging into IDPs, Google, GitHub, uh, Optica, Keycloak, all this good stuff, rate limiting, always got to check folks you know, knocking too loudly at your front door, and things like a developer portal, which is really important too. Uh, David, over to you for the console overview. Thanks, Daniel. So uh, thanks for the overview for Ambassador. And, and the, the reason why we definitely need to partner with Ambassador is to allow you to basically uh, provide the ability to send that traffic into the service mesh. Now, we build a service mesh for console specifically, and we deploy this across multiple different platforms. Uh, we do have Kubernetes support, so you can deploy this really easily using a Helm chart um, and then deploy our Kubernetes binaries as well as our pods. Uh, we also have um, support for managed services, uh, so we can we can basically you know manage your service mesh running on an AWS nature and then run the AKS Rekes cluster as clients to that service mesh itself. Um, in terms of some of the capabilities, we we uh, we have native multi-region support, so you can basically build multiple uh, what we call data centers uh, in different regions and then federate them together to have uh, data center to data center communication. You also have the ability to have multi-cluster support so you can have multiple service meshes uh, that are part of your, your architecture. Envoy is a critical part of what we, we build on top of, and we have the ability to, uh, to basically uh, leverage you know, the listeners and also uh, the APIs that Envoy provides us. Uh, we can configure those listeners uh, using a lot of the things that are built into Envoy. And uh, one of the things that helps us do that is our CRDs, where we built that in uh, our latest version of console, at, uh, console Kubernetes, where we can basically define native Kubernetes objects to uh, define how we want to route traffic, for example, uh, into the service mesh and between service to service. One of the key things that, that console service mesh provides is, a, is a, a feature called intentions for service to service authorizations. So every service has its own identity uh, and we actually provision uh, certificates specifically for the services. And what we can do is encrypt the traffic from one service to another uh, using certificates and, and also make sure that uh, we authorize the traffic between them using MTLS. Um, Layer 7 traffic routing is also a key part of a service mesh, uh, making sure you can do things like canary deployments, uh, making sure that uh, like if there's a header or a prefix that you want to use to route within the actual service mesh, uh, we can actually enable you to do that using CRDs. And uh, finally, um, we have the ability to make it really easy for you to start to leverage uh, MTLS uh, and integrate with a first-class uh, secrets management solution like Vault uh, that can provision, uh, act as a CA for Azure Group Console and also provision certificates. So a uh, really good way to start getting started with the whole Azure Corp stack and also make it uh, a very zero trust network experience. So let me uh, go ahead and do a quick demo uh, and I'm gonna share my screen. And I wanna show you 
basically the the uh, Kubernetes initializer and how you can use it with HashiCorp console in the Kubernetes experience. So this is the actual landing page uh, when you go to get ambassador.io uh, initializer. And this is this is basically the, the different options that you have. Um, so what I'm gonna do uh, is go ahead and use AKS as uh, my actual Kubernetes environment. You can use a lot of different ones like EC2, EKS, Minikube, uh, Docker Desktop, et cetera. And what it does is it actually gives you options to deploy, you know, things like load balancers, enable things like t terminating TLS. Uh, they provision a Let's Encrypt certificate for you, so you can actually use use that uh, for, for, for getting those certificates and encrypting traffic. And um, I, I typically use this because it's really easy uh, for me to just get a really quick domain name without having to use Azure to provision one. And um, the obviously the email address is what you need to verify your identity for the Let's Encrypt itself. Um, you can make sure that you either force uh, traffic through HTTPS or you send both. And uh, you can also preserve the original client IP. Um, there are other options for you to enable some other different types of um, tools, like uh, you can enable Prometheus, you can use Jaeger to actually go ahead and collect distributed traces and send that over to to the Jaeger, uh, the Jaeger UI. Um, if you want to use Keycloth for Auth, Argo CD, or Knative, you can enable that. Uh, I won't enable that for this demo, but you can definitely leverage that. And then um, finally, you can leverage console service mesh, and uh, you see your preferences here, and when you're done, you can go ahead and click uh, review and install. And so this gives me, like, I know it's really blown up, but it gives me a really uh, quick, uh, easy way to get started. And uh, what I'll do is I'll leverage my terminal now to basically show you that experience um, on, on AKS. And uh, right now I have a, it's like a three node cluster on AKS. Um, and what I'm gonna do, it's on 118 is just basically go ahead and install the ambassador edge stack. So it's, it's gonna install the um, the CRDs for the edge stack uh, to get things ready. And then what I'll do is install uh, the actual deployment of edge stack, uh, Jaeger open telemetry and console as well. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, so this is gonna take maybe a minute or so and while this is walking through and creating uh, a lot of these Kubernetes objects, like role binding, surface accounts, um, the actual services and pods. I'm going to go and really quickly show you, uh, you know, some of the, the things you can you can look at while it's deploying. Um, if you go to the bottom, you'll notice there is a, you know, there's definitely a lot of um, getting started material. But you can also download this. Uh, your custom installation that they've provisioned for you based on the wizard as YAML. And um, I'm gonna go ahead and just really quickly show you, for example, what this console look like. Um, oops. Right, so you can you can take this as a really good way to like understand how we deploy this. This is specifically Kube YAML. So uh, we were taking what was in the Helm chart, uh, making it really simple to actually just deploy via YAML and then it provides configuration for console. Uh, you can see it actually go ahead and shows you how to connect Prometheus with console. And there's a lot of other interesting things in here that you can leverage um, that uh, give you a really uh, native out of the box experience for the uh, de developer setting. So it looks like my, um, my uh, ambassador edge stack and my console deployment is deployed. And if I go ahead and just show you quickly, it looks like my servers are up and my clients are up and I should be good to go. Um, so uh, what I'm gonna do now is just a really simple config on the actual um, domain name. Oops. And I just copied and pasted the wrong thing. Give me a second, sorry. So I'm going to really quickly get the service IP uh, from Ambassador real quick. And I'm going to take this and put this in 
the form here, uh, and this will give me a unique domain name, which is really cool. Um, and that basically allows me to access it publicly without having to use IPs, right? And so this refreshes, uh, it, it tells me like, hey, I have a new domain name called tender nightingale edgedeck.me, and I can use that as opposed to just using the IP address. Uh, next, I'm going to configure Ambassador to take that domain name and um, uh, basically leverage that uh, for inbound traffic. And I could quickly go ahead and just monitor that uh, to see how that's progressing as it starts to utilize um, uh, basically Acme for uh, registering that specific certificate for that domain name. So it's ready. And... I'll go ahead and now navigate to my, uh, my new Tender Nightingale um, deployment. And so I can see here, uh, this is my Edge stack, and this is my Prometheus, uh, Jaeger, and then also console. So um, if I click on this, um, you want to make sure that you have the um, Edge CTO when deployed. Uh, it should bring up your ambassador UI so you can really quickly glance at you know, the mappings, which specifically help you map between the services and the URLs. Uh, this is my quick dashboard here, and then you can go ahead and configure it natively here. Um, also, you can go ahead and check out Prometheus um, deployed right out of the box. Um, you can go ahead and do your custom queries and look at all the metrics. And then uh, obviously Jaeger is installed as well. So if you have deployments that are using Jaeger, it's going to start to utilize tracing. And then finally, um, we have console here. Uh, so we can basically go ahead and leverage the services uh, that are within console and see that natively with the UI. Uh, the final thing I'm going to show you is a really quick demo on the service mesh and um, utilizing the ambassador API gateway to basically hit uh, the service from outside um, by, by leveraging end-to-end -end TLS. So let me quickly deploy uh, what's called the QOTM app. Um, this is a really quick demo app that Ambassador folks has built. And I can go ahead, if I just, oops, actually, let me just show it to you. Uh, so basically it's a deployment and it goes and it utilizes the connect and check annotation to basically enable that specific deployment as part of a service mesh uh, to make sure that we register that. And um, what we're also gonna do is uh, leverage what's called a mapping. And that basically tells me, um, you know, how do I actually map, you know, a prefix to a specific service that's running inside of console and route that traffic this way. Um, so we're using specifically here uh, a convention where we provide the actual uh, service name here, and then we provide dash sidecar dash proxy as a service, and then that picks it up and directs all the traffic there. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and apply that. Um, and also apply the mapping. Um, and so inside a console, uh, you should at least see, um, this is it starting to spin up, right? Um, you can see the service here. And I believe it's, yeah, it's initializing. Um, in the edge stack, you can also go and take a look at, um, sorry. In the edge stack, you should also be able to go ahead and look at the, uh, the mapping here um, to actually see that it's been created. Uh, basically, it's leveraging a Cube API, and you can see this is the, the actual mapping that we created. And so I'm going to wait for the pod to get deployed. It looks like uh, two or three are running. And um, now we have got three, so I'm going to go ahead and basically query uh, the actual service. I'm going to use this domain and I'm just going to paste this in here. Uh, so basically leveraging uh, the URL and then I'm going to hit the API. Oops. Oh, 
I see. I'll just do this one second. I'm just going to replace this here. And so I'm going to do a str straight up curl to the actual uh, domain name instead of using the variable. And uh, you should be able to get. Oops. Ah, let me take a look real quickly at the service itself. So it is running. Okay. Um, essentially what should happen is you should be able to get um, the actual response back from, from the actual service. And uh, as you can see here, this is the actual example that I'm walking through. Um, but essentially you're going to hit the actual service via that mapping prefix and you'll get back something like this, uh, where it says, um, Hey, this is the quote of the moment. And then you can utilize that for the API. And this is an example of leveraging basically an API to talk to a, a public API that's exposed in the ambassador. Uh, so I wanted to quickly show you that. Um, and uh, one of the nice things is you can basically leverage a lot of the tooling that's already built in there. Uh, again, when you're using console with ambassador, uh, go ahead and start to leverage, um, you know, this convention where you basically have to find the actual mapping uh, between the service and a prefix. Uh, again, it's the service dash sidecar dash proxy. And then you can go ahead and make sure that the, um, uh, the service is then uh, routed properly. So I'm going to hand it over back to to Daniel, and uh, he's going to wrap up the uh, the presentation. Thank you, David. I'll just wait for the uh, slides. Well, back the, the live demos are always tricky, right? I do feel for you there. Like, I've, I've seen you, you like literally like type that command last night, and it worked perfectly, right? <laughs> Classic. Uh, are we? Yep. Can we have the slides, please? Yep. I think I'm seeing myself as a shall I uh just to check David, are you seeing the slides or uh yeah, can you see that right now? Like yeah, I just, okay. in the I'm not sure if folks at uh, at home are seeing the slides. It looked different than earlier. Uh, if everyone's happy, I can uh, power on. Um, do shout in the uh, the chat or the Q and A if you can't see the slides. Uh, but what I want to wrap up on now is um, just to give a few tips around moving from a playground to proof of concept, ultimately to production. There's definitely you know a bunch of lessons I've learned along the way, a bunch of mistakes I've made when I was deploying a lot of apps to production, pre Kubernetes and also Kubernetes. So let's just run through now some of these um, steps. So with a playground, the goals are all about learning. We talk a lot in Ambassador Labs about thinking about the WIFMs. And we say WIFMs as in what's in it for me. Uh, and definitely think about it from a dev and an ops perspective. You know, David showed you there a very quick way to bootstrap an application-ready Kubernetes cluster. You can play around with the Jaeger config, the Prometheus config, how it integrates with console. But do think about the dev aspects too. How much do you expect your developers to be able to you know, create CRDs for mappings for Ambassador, to be able to create CRDs for um, routing for, con uh, for console, particularly if you're embracing the layer seven benefits of console and Ambassador, being able to get developers to code that is really powerful. You can do things like canary releasing, traffic shaping, all this good stuff. So it's very much with a playground, spin up the tech, play with it, get comfortable, but think about the uh, integration into your platform and the workflows. That's the key message. When it comes to proof of concept, we talk a lot in Ambassador Labs again about dancing skeletons or version zero, same kind of thing. It's about moving on from the playground experience, being a bit more production-like and seeking feedback from all stakeholders. The goal really is to flush out requirements and not only the functional requirements, but critically the cross-functional requirements. So as you're spinning up a more realistic environment, maybe you've got some VMs in the mix, a couple of Kubernetes clusters, you're seeing how console works over all these, ambassador routes into these things. Do think about things like testing, both testing from an operational standpoint, 
are my networks working correctly? But also, how are my developers going to be working with these things? How are they going to be testing end-to-end -end services in staging, in production, these kind of things? And also think about security. As David mentioned several times, you know, the things like end-to-end uh, -end TLS, so terminating the TLS ambassador, re-establishing MTLS straight into the uh, into the Kubernetes cluster using console and be vault to manage your certificates, then you really get that security all the way down through the stack. And the beauty of using something like console with sidecars is you also do get that service identity. The sidecar running next to a pod, next to a, you know, an actual application, can maintain an identity. And as David says, you can do intentions. And I actually did a webinar with Nick Jackson uh, at HashiCorp, and we went into a bit more depth about using uh, intentions to sort of segment networks and also to and provide that kind of service-to-service -service security guarantees. The web can talk to database, but the, perhaps you know, the front-end service can't talk directly to the database. You can set up those intentions to very clearly define uh, service-based uh, routing and service-based segmentation of your network, which is really good. Finally, with production, the goal is really about hardening the solution. So it's all about resilience of technology, the processes, and the people. And David, I know you've got some good examples of resilience from the console side of how you want to run this in production. Yeah, uh, so in terms of uh, getting started with console in production, uh, as well as things like Ambassador, uh, when you have the ability to make sure that the, the traffic comes in from the outside world, we want to make sure that we definitely leverage uh, the production uh, artifacts that are available to you. Uh, so the uh, the initializer is really meant to get you started, and it, it goes with um, providing custom YAML that's um, built from the Edge stack. Helm, Helm repo as well as the console Helm repo. So uh, what you want to do is, is leverage both the official Helm repos for, for Ambassador and HashiCorp console, uh, utilize uh, the ability to create your own custom values files uh, to configure console Kubernetes and use that as a starting point, uh, right, for creating that baseline that works successfully. And then over time, make sure that you start to leverage things like uh, integrating your CA so that making sure that you're, you're using a, a, a verified CA or using some link vault to basically help with uh, integrating that um, the security even tighter. Um, and making sure that your, you know, your, your servers are HA as well as the applications that are running are HA. Uh, there's a lot of things that you do in terms of testing um, and lots of, uh, you know, continuous in integration deployment that you'll do uh, to make sure that what you're trying to deploy eventually gets hardened and then uh, ma made available through things like uh, the traffic shifting availabilities that allow you to push a blue to green deployment. Awesome stuff, David. Awesome stuff. Yeah, I think the the meta things for me is is do expect the unexpected. Rely on standardized technologies, just as David said. Helm is you know my go to uh, resource for deploying production charts. Um, optimizing for the ability to iterate fast is key. You know, base all your technologies on standards. You know, use what's uh, what's out there. Build on the Helm charts. Um, but do also think about putting in observability into your stack. And not only observability of runtime using things like Jaeger and Prometheus we've talked about, but even the ability to understand what you're deploying from where, which Helm repo you're consuming from, are you doing any modifications on it? Because when you come to debug things, being able to very quickly understand all these you know, configurations is really key in my experience. Um, so really think about, you know, as you go into production, optimize for the ability to iterate. You're probably not going to get it exactly right first time. You want to get it as right as possible, as correct as possible. But there's always that inevitable bug or thing you've forgotten. But the ability to be able to quickly observe understand and fix the issue is the most important point there, I think. So as you're doing the proof of concept, do think about that workflow again. Think about how to fix things that are going wrong. Right, just wrapping up, just come back to the conclusion slide, very much like the high-level TLDRs we gave at the start. Cloud native comms do require intentional design. Kubernetes gives you some fantastic abstractions around services, pods, deployments. When you layer on in the ingress and you layer on service mesh on top, you have much more control, much more uh, of a fine-grained ability to observe and understand what's going on. But it does require that intentional design, particularly with multiple clusters. When you're going from Kubernetes to VMs, this is all definitely possible using Ambassador and Console, but it requires that intentional design. And we recommend you know, getting started with a playground is a good way to understand all the technologies before moving on to that next level. 
Ambassador is very much focused at the ingress traffic and console very much focused at the service mesh space, the service to service comms. They're both powered fundamentally by the same technology. Envoy is at the kernel. There's a lot of other good stuff on both products or both projects around these things, but the control planes are different for ingress and the service to service comms. That's why the, the CRDs, for example, are different. We have mappings in Ambassador. Console is a bit more different with the, the service routes and the routing, but it's fundamentally the same thing under the hood, just subtly different config. So do think about the, the two different ways you're going to be configuring your network. I said this before, but bootstrap your skills in a playground. The time to make mistakes is when you're spinning up an initialized playground. It all goes wrong, blow it away, start again. You don't want to be doing that really on your proof of concept because that's going to take you a long time to iterate. You definitely don't want to be like doing that in production right when it's all going a bit wrong. The key thing here is taking it step by step. You know, I've learned of my sort of 20 or so years doing software development. You have to, you know, optimize for iterations, set your clear goal, set your hypotheses, set your metrics, work towards that. And that's both from like the applications you're building and also the platform you're building. It's all about evolving through understanding the technologies, figuring out how they go into the workflow, both from a dev and an ops perspective, really critical there as well. And then ultimately pushing it through to production. And there's always learnings after it hits production as well, right? At that moment, I say thank you very much. There's a bunch of links on the slides here. You can get started with Initializer. That goes to the link David showed. Lots of great docs on the Ambassador website, on the console website. There's Learn at HashiCore as well, which is always a fantastic resource. And we've put a bunch of links basically you can follow up more information. There's Slack channels. HashiCore have Slack channels. We have uh, Slack channels at Ambassador. We'd love to see you there. We'd love to answer any questions you've got. You can find us on the interwebs as well. And we can answer a few questions now, I think, Karen. Yeah, thanks, David and Daniel. At this time, we're going to open it up for questions. We have had a few come in, um, but please feel free to keep you know, typing your questions in the QA box. Um, there is one question that has come in. I'll just pose that now. Um, does the initializer enable consoles ACLS and TLS, i.e. console helm charts, console helm charts manage system ACLs? True. Yes. Yeah. So we, we don't have the ability to do that with the, uh, the initializer right now, but you can definitely take what's in the initializer and then create ACLs yourself uh, to leverage uh, some of that capability. The ACLs typically will leverage for an organizational complexity if you're trying to limit specifically how people access or certain things can access uh, certain APIs. Uh, that's something that you can you can leverage, but yes, if you're going to production, then uh, using something like ACLs with Helm chart is is a way to go. Great, thanks, David. And then the next question we have is: Does the initializer support node port configurations if your on offline cluster doesn't have a load balancer? Well, great question, Karen. Um, out of the box, we do have the option for Minikube and other Kubernetes clusters, and I can't remember the exact config, but even if it's not, it's very easy, as to David's point, to download the YAML and go in and make the configurations. I know we have a bunch of folks that use a Metal LB with Minikube to be able to expose um, a, a load balancer, to be able to expose the service. So if you haven't had a play with Minikube Metal LB, worth a, a quick web search, and there's a basically a mini cube plugin to enable that kind of thing. But um, even if we don't uh, by sort of by default or as an option enable the node port, you can definitely do it by looking at the YAML and it's a small tweak. Great, thanks Daniel. And could you deploy Ambassador and Console through Terraform? Yes, uh, so it's, it's one of the things that uh, I know folks have done a lot. Uh, basically, they want to leverage the same interface for deploying your infrastructure as well as your infrastructure software. So um, there is a specific provider that, that a lot of folks use that's very popular called the, the Terraform console, Terraform Helm provider. And you can take any, any Helm values file and deploy that uh, for both ambassador and console. And I know a lot of customers that utilize that uh, to get their, their applications deployed. Yeah, I love that provider, David. That's what I've used as well. It's great stuff. Thanks, David. So one other question from proof of concept to production. Um, I can't find any documentation on how to properly use both Helm charts with the Ambassador Console Connect integration part. Can can we point um, Clement in the right direction here? 
Oh, a uh, great question. Yeah, I mean, definitely going to follow up offline on that one as well. Um, the I, I believe the console docs are a good place to start there, Karen. But if the person uh, asking the question wants to DM me, I can definitely dive in and perhaps you join me on one of the slacks and we can go into a bit more information. Yeah, I, I think in terms of um, getting started, I, I definitely want to make sure that you first uh, deploy the ambassador uh, edge stack first, and then you'll go ahead and deploy the console service mesh using the Helm repo. Um, one of the things, um, I, I didn't show you all the details of doing that, but uh, one of the things is when you start to leverage ambassador console and TLS, uh, you want to make sure that you go ahead and make sure that the mapping is set correctly. Um, in my example, I didn't have the, the TLS mapping, so I think that's why we're, we got the error. Uh, but you have that ah. quick, specifically built in there, um, then you should be able to make sure that the API works. But yeah, I was able to actually go ahead and, and resolve that uh, on my end. <laughs> nice. Thanks, David. I think we just have time for one more question unless um, we there are any others. But this one here, could you tell us more about some recent highlights from both Ambassador Edge Stack and Console Service Mesh products? Yeah, shall I go first, David, on that one? So we go put out a new release very quickly, uh, very recently. A um, lot of focus on rate limiting. So we're seeing increasingly customers wanting to, you know, from a security standpoint, rate limit on the front door, like uh, premium customers versus fully paid up customers. We're also seeing a lot of folks doing uh, rate limiting around security purposes too. Now we have the um, IP allow and deny list. So you can kind of fundamentally lock down IP blocks. But we've now got even finer grain control with the rate limitings. So that's been super interesting, like hearing the community and the customers feedback on, on the rate limiting. We've also put some new functionality around using Envoy's RDS functionality. So if you're an Envoy person, check out uh, Tim's blog post. My colleague Tim Post wrote a fantastic blog post that linked to how we using some of the native uh, Envoy RDS um, functionality for, for updating and maintaining long-lived connections. So folks using like WebSockets, all this kind of good stuff. So we're always listening to the community. We love folks you know, jumping on our Slack. We love folks getting involved in the Twitter. It's very much a community-driven project, very much a customer-driven project. If anyone's got any requests or any queries, we'd love to hear from you. Yeah, and from the, the console side, we, we've been working hard in making sure that the service mesh that we build uh, starts to basically implement a lot of different use cases that folks are trying to uh, to discover and also utilize. So uh, one of the things that we did was we built what's called application aware intentions, which allow you to basically, again, leverage a service to service identity to authorize certain services, talk to other services based on layer seven attributes, like for example, headers or you know, URL prefixes. So we can allow and disallow communication based on that. We also have now inside of the UI, uh, a visualization tool that lets you see that service to service communication, as well as some of the metrics if you deploy Prometheus. And we'll show you, you know, what those metrics look like from requests, error rates, and timing metrics. We deploy this in OpenShift as well. That's one of their, our nice features where you can deploy this in an enterprise setting on a Kubernetes uh, deployment. And we enabled one of our key features is enabled what's what we call custom resource definitions, which a lot of cube native applications have already built. Uh, but we want to make sure that you can start to leverage and figure that service mesh with CRDs. Um, there's a lot more uh, that we built into 1.9, but those are some of the, the key ones that we built and uh, uh, we're proud of. And we'll look forward to more enhancements in 1.10 and also uh, more enhancements with Ambassador as well. Thanks, David and Daniel. We actually have one one more question, um, and it's in reference to a blog post. And um, so, this blog post enables ACL and TLS for console, but the services don't write correctly. And um, can we get an example for Ambassador to be console with ACLS and TLS enabled? Um, is that a question that you might have to take offline, David, Daniel, or? I think that's a great question, Karen. Yeah, I think taking offline would be would be good. Um, just I'll have a chat with my colleague Tim, and then um, we can dive in and make sure some of the blog posts you know need updating sometimes, particularly as the technology moves on so fast in our Kubernetes cloud world. Um, but yeah, no, great observation there. We can definitely look into that. Great. We'll follow up off offline then on that particular question. Um, I think that.
that is it. Um, when, there are no other questions that have come in. So I want to thank you, David and Daniel, for the session today, and thank you to the audience. I hope everyone enjoyed today's webinar and has a better understanding of how you can quickly get started with both Ambassador and Consul on Kubernetes by levering, leveraging the new Kubernetes initialized network by Ambassador. There's a short poll at the end of this webinar, which we hope you can complete. And finally, as mentioned at the beginning, this webinar was recorded and we will make the recording available after processing. I will send an email to everyone who registered with the recording link. Have a great day. Goodbye, everyone.